Hey guys, how are you? Joseph the Baker. You can find me on Instagram and or Facebook by simply typing in Joseph the Baker. Not the, put another E at the end. Joseph T-H-E-E Baker on Instagram or on Facebook. I'm going to show you a really cool box mix hack that you can make using coffee, making coffee cake using box mix. Of course, my box mix preference of choice is Betty Crocker out of the Pillsbury and Duncan Hines. I get a lot of people say, aren't you a baker? Aren't you supposed to be making your cakes from scratch? No, don't discriminate against people that use box mix. There's nothing wrong with box mix. In fact, by you judging someone using box mix just might be the reason why they quit baking or cake decorating. And of course, uh, we all know that the, that um, a lot of bakeries use those big 50-pound bags of box mix because a lot of the powdered egg and powdered milk are inside the actual mix. You can find any mix and make it your own, and, and it's going to be just as fine. My personal preference is Betty Crocker over Duncan Hines and Pillsbury. Uh, Betty Crocker is fantastic. I like using the yellow. And, of course, we know it, the three main ingredients that go inside all these box mixes are eggs, oil, and water. We also know that you can substitute the water for basically any liquid content. A lot of people like to use milk. Now, if you are a coffee drinker, why are we adding coffee creamer to our coffee instead of milk? Again, if you were coffee drinkers, why are we adding coffee creamer to our coffee instead of milk? We're doing it for taste because we want our coffee to taste like French vanilla. We want it to taste like hazelnut. We want it to taste like whatever flavor coffee creamers there are. This time of year, there's lots and lots of flavor coffee creamers. Uh, even eggnog, you can experiment with eggnog and use that as the liquid portion in your box mix. Now, you're not going to substitute the full three cups of, of liquid um, coffee creamer because the consistency is a lot more thicker. And, of course, because the fats that are inside the creamer are going to make a mess in your oven. And it's just going to make your mix a lot more thicker than if you were to use three cups of water. We're going to make coffee cake today. And I thought it's being appropriate since we are making coffee cake to actually use a cup of coffee as the water content. I'm using the Fat Daddy-O's half sheet pan. The Fat daddy -O half sheet pan will do three boxes of cake mix. And of course, your type of pan has everything to do with your baking. All of my pans are Fat daddy -O pans. It's the iodized metals that are inside these pans that help not only keep it color, but help with the baking. And it's just, uh, it's just the best pan to use. Again, you can find these supplies I'm using and these pans at Baker's Bodega Express in Baldwin Park. Again, Baker's Bodega Express in Baldwin Park. No business license needed to shop. And of course, they are shipping all over the United States and parts of Canada. We're using the half sheet pan. The half sheet pan will do three boxes of cake mix. So since we're making three boxes of cake mix, that means we're using three cups of liquid, nine eggs, and a cup and a half of oil. Now, I went ahead and made a cup of coffee. I let it properly cool down, just like I would any cup of coffee. You can see there's a cup of coffee. You can see it. Um, we're going to go ahead and start measuring out the three cups that we need. A cup of coffee. And we're, again, we're substituting the water content for three cups of coffee. There's one. Count with me. There's two. And here's three. You can smell the coffee. You can smell the hazelnut and everything that's in the coffee. It smells really good. So that's our water content. Again, instead of using three cups of water, we are making coffee cake. It's appropriate we use a coffee. We're going to go ahead and follow it with our cup and a half of oil because it is three boxes. That's a half a cup three different times. And we are using nine eggs. The type, the size of eggs also matters. Size matters. Uh, you want to, I like using the medium eggs because if you're going to use nine extra large eggs, it just makes your liquid portion a little more, um, uh, you know, a little more liquid and, of course, not so firm. It takes your cake mix longer to bake. We're going to put the three bags of cake mix inside this. Again, we are using Betty Crocker yellow cake mix. We are following the directions on the box that with the ingredients for three boxes, except we're just substituting the, the water content for three cups of coffee, again, being appropriate since we are making coffee cake. I get questions asked, how come you like using the whisk instead of the paddle? I do like those air pockets that you find inside the cake mix. I like it kind of spongy, so I like using the whisk instead of the paddle. The paddle makes it more dense. Um, it's your preference, whatever you use. And again, especially because I'm making coffee cake, I like those air pockets inside. Now, we're going to make a peanut butter and jelly coffee cake. You're like, wait, what? Peanut butter and jolly, peanut butter and jolly. La, 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 la. Peanut butter and jelly coffee cake. That was almost a flawless demo, but this is going to continue it. Peanut butter and jelly coffee cake. How do you make peanut butter and jelly coffee cake? Jolly again. Ah, oh, peanut butter. This you know, screw it. Peanut butter and jolly coffee cake. Let's go ahead and start with the cake mix. We're going to go ahead and put a good heaping scoop of peanut butter in the actual mix. Now, what this is going to do is going to help keep your cake 
a little more moist because it's the same thing as that if you were if you were adding butter instead of oil to your cake mix, but we're adding both. Now butter is very, very strong, just like bananas. You can only you can put two tablespoons in this mix and you're going to get that taste of, of, of peanut butter or even a chunk of banana to make banana cake. Mixing them, they're really, really good. It's gonna give it kind of a dark color. Kind of scrape the edges a little bit. Bring it down. Yeah, you could smell you could smell the haze on that creamer from the coffee creamer, and you can smell the actual peanut butter. It smells good. It smells really, really good. Let's taste it. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mm. Smells really, really good. That smells amazing. While that is continuing to mix, we're gonna go ahead and lightly grease our pan with a baking non-stick. Don't do too much because you don't want to fry the bottom of your cake. Give it a light, light coat. Hit it up a little longer, get some air in there, get those air pockets mixed up really good. You can see it has really nice color to it. That's because of the coffee creamer, the peanut butter, and the coffee. Now your cake mix isn't going to taste like coffee. You know, it's going to bake out. But you know, your palate is really, really unique. It might taste the coffee that's inside there. I'm just showing you different hacks that you can use making box mix. You can actually, you can taste the peanut butter really, really good inside this mix. Peanut butter cake. Peanut butter cake, yes, you can use the same method for your cupcakes and anything else. Go. Let's get at the corners. Get it in the corners, really good. Now, how do we make it peanut butter and jelly? Let me show you. We're gonna use the 50 50 brand fruit fillings you can get from Baker's Bodega Express. You can use the strawberry or raspberry. This particular one, we will use the strawberry. We're going to just put a couple lines inside the cake. Just like that, peanut butter, jelly. Now we're going to add our streusel topping that we made earlier. This streusel recipe I've given several times on my social media. This is really, really good. Grab the container of streusel. Make sure you cover the whole pan. That one part of the pan that you don't cover, the cake is actually going to bake up and over it. Make sure you get the corners really, really good. You don't need a lot of streusel. Just to kind of cover the top. There we go, just like this. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab our dough knife. Start from the middle. Really pack the corners really, really good. Pack those corners really, really good. Set your oven 350 degrees. How do you check to see if the cake is done? Well, the same way you would check any cake. Um, you wanna kinda of lightly get a, 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 a stick. I like using a chopstick and sawing a little hole through the middle and pushing it through and making sure that the cake is done, making sure your stick doesn't hit the liquid jam and you're pulling it up and it looks like it's moist. Once your cake is properly done, you want to cover it right away with foil. If you don't, that streusel is going to bind itself together and become firm and you're not going to be able to cut it. Again, once your coffee cake is completely done, cover it with foil right away. Let it cool for about 30 minutes. Remove the foil. It's going to hit the top of the foil at heat, make moisture, soften up your streusel enough for you to go ahead and cut perfectly good slices. You can cut this into 24 good slices. It's going to be fantastic. Your end product, your end result is going to look just like this. This is spice apple coffee cake. What am I going to do with this? I'm going to line each piece with apple. This is really good. You guys, again, thank you for joining me. I am Joseph D. Baker. You can find me on Instagram and or Facebook by typing in Joseph T-H-E-E -E Baker. Um, also, you can uh, find me in St. Louis rolling on doves. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. You guys have a fantastic day. Go Cowboys.